Hey, folks, it's the Lincoln Project Podcast. I'm your host, Rick Wilson. 60 days until the election. Let's get to it. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. There is not a liberal America, any conservative America. There is the United States of America. Good night and good luck. Hey, everybody, it's Rick Wilson. Welcome back to the Lincoln Project Podcast. I am delighted to be joined today by Whitney Fox. Whitney is one of the rising stars in the American congressional uh, candidate field this year. She is running against Anna Paulina Luna in the Tampa Clearwater area. I'll skip the district number for right now because it will just confuse people. But she is in one of the hottest races in the country right now. And she is one of the folks that that is, as I said, a rising star in this business because suddenly out of nowhere in this purplish, reddish district, she's leading a hardcore MAGA candidate. In fact, I would say one of the craziest of the MAGA candidates. So Whitney Fox, welcome to the Lincoln Project Podcast. Thank you so much for coming on today. I know you are slammed. Um, talk to us about three things. First off, I always ask people these kind of questions. Where are you from? What, what led you to run for Congress? Um, and then let's talk about the state of the race right now as you're, as you're experiencing it. Sure. Thanks so much for having me, Rick. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm born and raised here in the Tampa Bay area, and this is what where I'm raising my own family now. And the reason why I decided to run for Congress was truly starting my own family. I just remember the medical bills, the lack of paid parental leave, the lack of affordable child care. It was really eye-opening to wonder, how is this okay that this is how we're starting American family is out in a ditch without the, the support that they need and deserve? And now, of course, I'm raising two daughters here in the state of Florida who are growing up a fewer rights than I did. So I decided I had to stand up and do something about it. And m throughout my career, I've worked for the community here in uh, Pinellas County area in the Tampa Bay area for public transportation and our county's Convention of Visitors Bureau. I know this community very well and the issues that we're facing, and we deserve better representation. As you know, we've got quite an extremist representing us at the moment, and this is not an extreme district. It is a moderate district of pragmatic voters and they are eager for a change. Well, I think one of the things that struck me uh, when I, before we, you and I even talked, one of the things that struck me is Anna Paulina Luna runs basically a campaign based around how do I get on Fox News? How do I get on MAGA Correct. social media? How do I piss off people, you know, around the country to see if I can be the most transgressive, whatever. But the thing I noticed about you was it was already like granular with you. Like, we're going to deal with the following things in the community, this, this, and this. We've got X number of people who need help on this issue, bang, bang, bang. And it was really, I mean, I found that very heartening because, you know, I think that goes back to what people and the founders certainly intended was that people representing a community in Congress were going to represent that community, not some amorphous, weird national culture war. Absolutely. And that's what we're finding talking to, you know, voters and neighbors here in the district is they are, they're tired of the extremism. They're tired of the constant culture war chasing, the headline chasing, and just like you said, just to get the, that attention and those clicks. And they want someone who's actually going to listen to the issues that they're facing and is going to go to D.C. and roll up their sleeves and get to work and work with others uh, who maybe don't agree on all of the same issues, but are going to actually be able to compromise and move policies forward. And at the moment, obviously, like you said, Anna Paulina Luna represents the far, far right extreme firebrand right. who just is not there to actually get any of the work done and to just complain and get as much attention as possible. You know, I think that is, a, it's the sort of shallow end of the political gene pool with her, that there's, that, that, that it's like, Nowhere in the Constitution and nowhere in the founders' discussions of how this country is going to be run was like made the best troll win. But right. I just feel like a lot of what she does is just plain, you know, political and media trolling and not governance, not not working for anybody's benefit. I mean, and, and you know, she wants to be on wants to be on. Be, she seems like she's trying out for a gig on Fox more than a gig as a member of Congress to represent Pinellas County. Absolutely. I mean, she was a social media influencer before she ran for office, and that's exactly what she's doing while she's currently in office. And many people here say that as well. When we're knocking on doors talking to voters, they say it seems like 
exactly what you said. Like she's interviewing for a position on Fox or in a cabinet, but not really here to represent the district and actually work for the people here. I mean, you might know this, Rick. I mean, she's not from the district. She's from California, moved here to run. So does she know that the people here, does she know the issues that they're facing and, and what they want her to fight for? I don't think she's paying attention. And people see that now that she has a record being in office. I mean, we are struggling with a huge affordability crisis, especially here in the Tampa Bay area. As you well know, home insurance is skyrocketing. And that is a big problem that I'm hearing from every voter I talk to. And there are, are things that we can be doing at a federal level to address these issues. I don't think I've heard her mention it once. Like you said, it's more about culture wars or UFOs or getting Merrick Garland arrested. It, it's Which are none of the issues that I am hearing talk, going door to door talking to voters. It's home insurance. It's housing affordability. It's protecting our reproductive freedoms, the, the threats against Social Security and Medicare being slashed. So these are real issues that people are struggling with. We have seniors in the area who are becoming homeless because they're on fixed incomes as prices could begin to skyrocket. So there are serious issues that need to be addressed. And people see that she's nowhere to be found in the district or talking about these serious issues. Well, it's a district that I know really well. I, it was part of my uh, field operations for George Herbert Walker Bush back when I ran that operation in 88. Sure. Um, I'm from Tampa originally. Um, and so I know a lot of what you're talking about in that district. And it really is a district with a very large senior population, a very large mm -hmm. veterans population, a very large population of people who are, as you said, facing this insurance crisis in Florida that no one in the state will do anything about. And, mm -hmm. and if you're if you're looking at a community that would be desperately, direly impacted, probably destroyed financially by a, a cat three, cat four that came through there, nothing has been done. And she certainly seems to have no interest in doing anything about uh, about the, the homeowners insurance crisis, because, folks, you're, if you're listening to this nationally, you know, there's that scene in The Godfather where he says, I'm going to speak Italian to Michael for a minute. Uh, as we're talking about this right now, Whitney and I are talking about this right now. This is something that Floridians obsess about because it is rising and rising and rising at to the point where my homeowner's insurance, and I, I live 20 miles inland in the panhandle, right. has quadrupled. Mm -hmm. And down there in, the, uh, uh, in Pinellas County, folks, which is right on the Gulf of Mexico, um, it is enormously more, uh, more burdensome for those people. Absolutely. And, and you hit the nail on the head, Rick, that there are, are these issues that people are struggling with and that they are concerned about. But they see that Anna Paulina Luna is is not even talking about these issues or what she can do to, to lower costs and lower prices. I mean, she ran on making Pinellas County affordable again. That was her campaign slogan. And by that measure, it's been a complete failure as prices continue to skyrocket here in Florida. So the, and you, like you said, this is a huge issue to Floridians. Many people say, oh, Whitney, that's an issue that needs to be addressed at a state level, but that's not true. There are, there are ways that we can work at this at a federal level, and I'm not taking that as an answer. This is a number one issue that, that our voters care about. So anyone running for office or holding an elected office in the state of Florida who's not talking about the home insurance crisis is not listening to their voters. Well, it's so, certainly something. If Republicans are saying that it, uh, you know, that it's a federal issue or a state issue, why are Rick Scott and Marco Rubio both arguing we have to do something about it in the Senate? Um, mm -hmm. if, if, if Anna Polina Luna doesn't care about it, she doesn't care about it. And then look, I don't think she probably understands it. She's a renter. She's not a, she's not a, she's not a long time resident. It's not something that's been sort of baked in the cake with her as a Floridian, mm -hmm. um, because she's really right. not one. She's sort of a, 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 a newcomer. And look, folks, if she'd found a more comfortable seat to run in, in Georgia or, or Texas or wherever she would have moved there, this is not. You know, that's one of the things that is it's so you know, you've worked around public service. You've worked around the areas right. where you're trying to, you know, to improve the community. That's something to me that I think is missing in a lot of these folks. They have a contempt for that stuff. They have a contempt for people who serve in government or serve in in, in, in the community like that. 
Mm -hmm. Well, and it's been interesting in this campaign, the conversations that we're having, because people just want their government to work for them, right? And and they want Democrats and Republicans to come together and actually get things done. And to your point, Rick, that you just said earlier, that's how our country was built to function. Not this idea of if I don't get everything I want, I'm going to take my ball and go home, which is how (laughs) she is operating, right? And and this district, uh, Pinellas County, Florida, has a long history of moderate Democrat and Republican leaders leaders from Congressman Chris, David Jolly, Bill Young, all fantastic leaders who are very moderate Democrats and Republicans. And this is not an extreme district by any means. And that's what they're used to is having people at every level of government here at Pinellas working together to get things done. And to your point, that's what I've done throughout my career. Born and raised here in the Tampa Bay area, working in public transportation most recently with our local, state, and federal leaders, Democrats and Republicans, saying how can we work on these projects to bring funds back to the district and actually better people's day-to-day lives. And that's what's hard. It's easy to do what Anna Paulina Luna is doing. It's easy to yell and scream, bang your fists on the table and say, we need to do something different, but to actually sit down with others, make those compromises and and actually govern, that's the hard part. And she's incapable of that. Well, you know, I I think one thing that I've noticed about your campaign is you are doing the work. You're doing the door knocking. Mm -hmm. You're doing the events in the community. You're not trying to go party with Matt Gates or get on Fox or any of this other (laughs) garbage. You're working on the, uh, in the community and it seems to be working for you. Tell us about the big poll that came out last week. Um, on, I guess it was Friday last week that has mm-hmm. sent a gigantic shockwave through a lot of the political community here in Florida. Well, here's the thing, Rick. It's been we've had a fantastic time on on our campaign because we are doing exactly what you said. We're talking to the voters, and more importantly, we're listening to them, and we're talking to Democrats, independents, and Republicans because. Any representative should be proud to represent all of their constituents, regardless of their party affiliation. And that's what this campaign is all about. I mean, my my father is is a proud Republican, and we have many long conversations at the dinner table. But at the end of the day, we respect one another, and we talk about the issues and where we might see eye to eye. And that is why we've been so successful in our campaign. We won at the primary back on August 20th. I won a five-way primary with almost 60% of the vote. And that is huge to just show the amount of support that we've got behind us. And to your point, not shortly after the primary, a new independent poll came out that showed that we are leading by four points against Anna Paulina Luna. And that includes a, a huge number of independents and even I think it was 15 or 16 percent of Republicans. And that's because the conversations we are having with a lot of these moderate Republicans are she's done nothing for us. She represents a few extreme far right Republicans, but they see that nothing is getting done, even here in the district. And they are so frustrated by that. They are embarrassed with how much time and taxpayer dollars she has wasted with her time in Congress. And they want someone who's actually going to get to work regardless of what party they affiliate with. You know, that your, your, your point about that being a classic swing district in Florida, a lot of moderate Republicans always, forever, especially the south part of the county, have always been there in, in that equation. They're, that, that right. this is not, um, folks. This is not like in Alabama. This is this is. It looks a lot more like George H. W. Bush Republicans, Ronald Reagan Republicans, even George Bush Republicans, right. than it does Donald Trump Republicans. Um, one of the things that I've been, you know, watching from that survey, you know, you're up for uh, Vice President Harris is up in the district. And it does seem to me to be one of those bellwether districts in the state that I've always kept an eye on very closely, because you're looking at the change in the margins there. And if you're pulling Mm -hmm. 14, 15, 16% of Republicans across the line, it becomes a really difficult equation um, with good Democratic turnout. How do you feel about about the enthusiasm level with, with with your Democratic uh, you know, the, with the base voters out there. And, and and my second question is, how do you think that independents are reacting both to your campaign and to Vice President Harris? Because that enthusiasm is a, is the real key in this equation, I think. Absolutely. I mean, in order for, for us to be successful in this race, which we are, are obviously polling that we can be, is if we have voter turnout. Anna Paulina Luna won back in 2022 
because the t- turnout was abysmal. It was pretty right. terrible. And it, I mean, there are many different reasons why 2024 is so different. It's a presidential year. We obviously have some, a lot of enthusiasm and excitement now with the changes at the top of the ticket. Right. And we see that here on the ground. I mean, people who may have otherwise been apathetic are coming out in force and excited. I mean, we've had hundreds of people sign up to volunteer just for our campaign alone, let alone for any other, the, the presidential here in the district. So people are are excited, they're enthused, and we know that turnout is going to be different in 2024 than it was in 22. For that reason, plus the fact that we have this horrible total, near total abortion ban, six week abortion ban here in Florida. And now we've got uh, an amendment four, which is an abortion referendum on the ballot. So there are many reasons why we are expecting much higher turnout in 2024. Not to mention the fact that Anna Paulina Luna has been so extreme on many of these issues, like supporting a national abortion ban without exceptions for rape, incest, or life of the mother, which, I mean, if we think about what that means, she supports a 10-year-old rape victim having to be forced to carry a baby to term. I mean, this is not, it doesn't get more extreme than this in in a stance on abortion. So because of all of these reasons, we know that we've got people who are fired up and are going to be turning out to vote. And we feel really confident because of the the support we've got with our base. And also, like you mentioned, seeing independents and moderate Republicans that we are moving over because we aren't being divisive. This isn't a campaign where we are are screaming at the top of our lungs about how you know the other side is evil, but more we are bringing people together and saying, what can we do to work on these issues that, that matter to you? So there's a lot of enthusiasm this year that we haven't seen in a while. And I think that's really going to help carry us through as long as we continue to run our race and get our message out about why Luna is too extreme and what we hope for for our future and supporting the people here in the district. We've, we've got a shot at winning this thing. And that's why it is the most flippable congressional seat in the state of Florida because of how extreme Anna Paulina Luna is and because of how great of a candidate I am. And that's why we've got a real shot at flipping the seat. (laughs) Well, I will say your reputation as a good candidate is getting out there. I had people in last week in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Chicago and New York all say, oh my God, you're from Florida. Do you know Whitney Fox? I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> and and <laughs> it is that, it is you doing the work um, mm-hmm. that is making it possible. And I want to just tell people, you know, there's a thing about candidates. Some candidates have a natural gift for doing this and they don't mind the work of going out, knocking doors, sitting down in people's living rooms with a total stranger and asking for 15 minutes of their time and to make their case. And you clearly are doing that. And that, I think, is just something that is so I, – I can tell you, I think people love that. I think voters love feeling like somebody's listening to them because mm-hmm. that's where a lot of – that's where a lot of the very negative framing of our politics has come from is this idea that people in Washington or people in leadership or people in Tallahassee do not care, do not listen, do not pay attention. Right. And, and you know, I think that investment you're making is much better than trying to, you know – post whatever bikini and gun pick uh, <laughs> onto, onto social media, you know, will cause a stir that day. Absolutely. Well, you know, when my when my husband and I sat down and talked about if we were going to do this, if we were going to run for Congress, one, one of the things he said to me was, Whitney, you will be such a great candidate because you actually care and people are going to be able to tell. And it and it's true. I, I mean, as, as corny as it might sound, I, I do I do exactly what you just said because I want to hear I've heard so many amazing stories of people who this one gentleman told me the other day that, you know, his daughter is pregnant for the first time with his first grandbaby. And he encouraged her to go stay with family in Massachusetts because he didn't feel like it was safe for her to be pregnant in the state of Florida. I mean, I've heard so many stories about seniors who are retired and are concerned about whether or not they can afford to continue living here because prices have continued to go up, or they're making these tough decisions between their prescription drugs or paying for rent. You know, working in public transportation where we connected people to affordable housing and to healthcare and to jobs, I see people struggling daily here in our district. And there's so much we can do to help people, Rick. The best thing about this campaign and what I'm enjoying about it, so what I enjoy most about it is I hear these stories and I'm so excited because when we win, 
we are going to be able to change people's lives and actually do good for them and make sure that we are helping people in a way that they deserve. And that's what really gives me hope is that I hear other people saying that our campaign is giving them hope. And they see, to your point, that that we are listening to them, that we want to work for them. And the idea that I have this opportunity to not just be a good example for my children or to show them that that they can stand up for what they believe in, but that we can actually benefit people's day-to-day lives is what keeps us going. And it's very exciting. So when you're out there talking to people, obviously homeowners insurance, um, look, we're seeing it in our polling everywhere is the, is the choice question is, and the Dobbs question is this like thunder cloud hanging up over the, the, over the electorate right now. They are... Mm-hmm furious about it, including a lot of Republican women, including a oh, yeah. very large number of Republican women. Um, what other issues are you hearing like in the living room? Because look, look, folks, you should all know when you sit down with people in the real world or you focus group them or you poll them, they very frequently do not say, oh, Antifa is my biggest issue. Woke trans books are my biggest issue. They, they almost never say those things. What are you hearing out there in the world that is that is shaping your view of the campaign? I hear a lot of stories about how different things are now than they used to be years ago or from our parents' generations, right? Yeah. People used to be able to, one parent used to be able to work one job and and be able to have a roof over your head, put food on the table. But now it really feels like you have to have both parents working. Or We talk to so many people like myself who are in the sandwich generation where right. they're taking care of their kids and also taking care of their parents. And we don't have a system in place to help people when they are caring for family members. And that was a huge part of why I decided to run as well. But obviously, majority of our our district being seniors, they don't want to put that burden on their children. And, And they worry about They've worked their entire lives, and now here they are at the end of their lives, You know, should be able to enjoy the last few years of their lives with their family, and they are worried about the burden that they are financially putting on their children to care for them. So it really comes down to what are we doing to take care of our people? And, and that seems to be the, the main theme throughout all of the issues I'm hearing from folks is they can't seem to make ends meet. Child care is so expensive, rent, home insurance, all uh, car insurance everything is adding up. Their paychecks aren't going up, but all of the costs are going up. While, of course, we have these corporations who are making record profits. So it's really a fo- the main focus of our campaign is, is hearing these issues that everyone is, is telling us about and what is the main theme throughout all of it. It's, it's really caring for our people and how can we lower costs so that they can make their, their daily needs met. Yeah, I think that's something that, that the economic strain after COVID that has percolated through this, you know, with, with inflation and price increases and, and and energy increases and all those things, it is slowly diminishing, but it, that damage is going to take a long time to unwind. And I don't think you get all that damage fixed with just another tax cut for Elon Musk at this point. Right. Yeah, no, exactly. So let me ask you this question. What are the things that, how is, how is Anna Polina communicating about you? What is she saying about you on the campaign trail um, that that you want to push back on here, where you've got an audience of people that are that are going to be able to influence and, and amplify your message on on the pushback. No, I appreciate that, Rick. You know, she has not mentioned me yet. I think she wants to avoid it as long as possible. She right. did see. I think she saw our recent poll, and of course, you know, tweeted about you know how we've seen polls like this in the past, and and commented on other polls um, and their accuracy. So it looks like she might be, of course, maybe a little bit triggered by our recent poll what? results. But you know, I I think that her message against us is going to be the same message that they're going to say about all. You you know, generic Democrats is they're like, to your point, going to push these culture war issues. But, and to those who want to push back on it, I think, I think it's really going to, our campaign's going to speak for itself and just the support right. that we have from the community of, listen, I'm not a politician. I am just a, a local native concerned mom who's trying to raise my family, take care of my parents and, and cares about my community and has been serving our community. So I think that, um, you know, a lot of these culture 
there were issues that she's going to come after me about. I think people are just tired of hearing that and they want to hear what, what have you done for me? What have you done to help me and my family? Or what do you plan to do? And that's not going to be her message is she's going to, of course, I'm sure talk about immigration. Well, we have many opportunities while she was in Congress to address the border security and immigration policy. I mean, we, we need immigration reform. Absolutely. But she's, she, what would she run on if she actually addressed it during her time in Congress? Like, so what, what issue would she, would she have to talk about? So I think that those are going to be the biggest issues she's going to come after us on. But uh, we feel really confident that they're just not going to land and people are tired of, of hearing about the culture war issues. Do you feel like you're getting support from the National Democratic Party, from the D-Trip? How do you feel about all that? So I'll tell you, it's been it's been tough as a person running in Florida. There's a, <laughs> so we've been we've been, you know, screaming at the top of our lungs. Listen, this is a winnable seat. As long as we've we've got a great message, a great campaign. We have a, an incumbent who's not doing the job, who is pretend who is acting as if she's in an R plus 20 district when right. really this is a more moderate district. Um, so we are we've been really trying to show what we've got behind us, whether it's fundraising which we've, as a as somebody running as a first-time candidate in a five-way primary, I'm really proud of the work we've put in and the support we've received. But we have to keep going and showing that we've got the polling and we've got the funds and we've got the people behind us that th- this is a, a, a horse worth betting on, you know, that we've got, we've got what it takes to win. And I think that we are on that right path. And what we've been saying to a lot of these national and party leaders and, of course, to national partners is we can't sleep on Florida this year. No. Right. And we have many cycles, but with abortion on the ballot and the enthusiasm we've got behind us and an incumbent like Anna Paulina Luna, if we don't support this race in Florida, you can say goodbye to this seat for the next decade, right? This is our opportunity and our chance where we can actually have a great candidate running against a far, far right incumbent. We've got the right message. We've got the right support behind us. We've got abortion on the ballot and the enthusiasm behind the presidential. We can make a change in Florida. We cannot sleep on Florida this year. Many people think that Florida is red, 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 and that is simply not the truth. And you know that, Rick, as well. It, there's been a lot of gerrymandering to try to make it more red than it actually is. But man, even even our Republican supporters, uh, they they are crossing party lines because of how extreme she is and how tired they are of nothing getting accomplished. So we've got a really exciting opportunity here in Florida. And the support into our congressional race is going to help our Senate race against Rick Scott with Debbie McCarcel Powell. It's going to help down ballot races in, in our state legislature. So there's a lot of opportunity here. And that's what we are, are trying to get the message across is that we cannot sleep on Florida. So Whitney, one other thing I was thinking about is sort of a parallel here. Um, A lot of these MAGA, you know, social media only candidates, the Lauren Boeberts, the Marjorie Taylor Greens, the Matt Gateses of the world, all of them are kind of fragile candidates, honestly. They don't really have much else to go on. Uh, This is a lot like some of those other races out there where if we pick up this seat, we not only pick up a seat, but we also show people once again how all these MAGA people that are just completely off the rails, how vulnerable they really are, right? Absolutely. I mean, many people have been comparing this race to the Colorado Three race against Lauren Bober and how if we had invested in that race, we, we could have easily defeated her. And what we don't want is that for that to happen again. And we have an opportunity here. We just need to make sure that we are getting the support from the National Party. Hopefully we will hopefully, fingers crossed, get on their red to blue yep. and and obviously get the support that we need in order to defeat somebody like Anna Paulina Luna, because it's a very similar situation. Folks, the, these, these I, I, I've said this a lot, they are hothouse flowers. Look, a Matt Gates in an R plus 23 district, he'd probably be there until he's dead. But this is not an R plus 23 district. This is a district that's really close. She got a fluky win. And I think we can take it from her. And I think the more you break those people, everybody, at the top level, the more you take those people off the stage, the harder it is for this really negative feedback loop of trolling, 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 blowing things up, hurting people, causing chaos, conspiracy stuff, all that. You start to break down the ability of those people to influence the political dialogue, and we will have a better country. Well, and on that point, Rick, when you look at the the Congress in the past couple of years, 
Anna Paulina Luna has been one of those Marjorie Taylor Greens, Lauren Berber, Lauren Berber, Matt Gates type of people who right. is part of the Freedom Caucus and really willing to shut down the government any chance that they get and causing ousting speaker after speaker just there mm-hmm. to cause fire. And to your point, we have an opportunity here where a lot of those far right extreme politicians are in very red districts. This is a flippable district yep. with one of the worst members of Congress that we can get them out of office and, and make a huge change in the way that we're governing. It's a, it's a, it'll be a big win, not only for Whitney and for Florida, but for America, folks. Absolutely. So, folks, I want to say something before we wrap up here. I'm going to we're going to we're going to get all Whitney's information. You know how to get to her in a second. Um, I rarely do this, but I am personally endorsing and financially supporting Whitney. Um, we are we are an enormously impressed with her work. I don't do this often. It is it is a rarity for me to do this um, because most candidates don't impress me. Just honest answer. Some of them are perfectly fine. I think Whitney has the gift. I think she has a moment here. And I think this is the kind of race where we can make a gigantic difference in the in a campaign like this. So with that, Whitney, tell folks where they can reach you on social media, where they can reach the website for the campaign, and most importantly, where they can donate. Thank you so much, Ricky. I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate your support. If any of you would like to help us flip the seat in Florida and send Anna Paulina Luna, one of the worst members of Congress, uh, packing, you can go to WhitneyFoxForCongress.com. You can also find me on social media uh, at WitFox is my uh, Twitter handle. Well, Whitney, thank you so, so much for coming on the Lincoln Project podcast today. We will be in touch. I will see you, I hope, in Tallahassee really soon. Uh, and folks, I, uh, you're going to you're going to really enjoy getting to know Whitney. She is an impressive candidate and is a great model for how you run in these seats and win. So with that, Whitney, we'll talk to you again soon. And uh, folks, we'll see you next time on the Lincoln Project podcast. Thank you so much, Rick. Good luck.